Hi guys. Today we're finally moving on to our next and final section for this chapter. In this section, we'll be looking at special cases. These are problems that have a special pattern to them. And so we could potentially not have to show work on these problems if we can memorize the pattern. That being said, if you're not good at memorizing or if you don't understand the pattern, you can always fall back onto one of our previous methods like the box method or foiling or distributing or something like that. Before we learn our first method for today, I need to point out that when we have a parenthesis squared and there's an addition problem on the inside, that means that we're gonna take our parentheses and we're gonna multiply it by itself. So remember that when you square something, that means you times it by itself. So in this example, x plus two times x plus two. It does not mean that you distribute the square. Because it's an adding problem, we cannot distribute the square. If it was a multiplying problem, we could use our rules for exponents and distributing would be fine, but not across a plus sign. So do not distribute that square. Instead, I'm going to show you how to multiply this problem, x plus two quantity squared, uh, using some patterns. To help us discover the patterns, I have written out four problems that all start as a parenthesis squared. I used the box method to figure out my final answer. And then we're gonna kind of analyze these and try to figure out what's the pattern? What is happening the same in every single question? And if we can figure out the pattern, and then maybe we can find the final answer without doing the box method. If you want to pause and analyze for yourself for a little bit, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. So in these problems, first of all, um, because it was being squared, I wrote the same thing on the side of every box, right? So this was a y plus 7, and this is also a y plus 7. I have a 3a plus 2 and another 3a plus 2. So again, if you're going to use the box method, make sure that the sides of the box are identical. Inside the box, um, every single first term is a perfect square. And it's actually just the first number from the parentheses squared, right? So y squared, uh, 3a squared, we can square the 3 and we can square the a. 3 squared is 9, a squared is a. Uh, same thing down here, 6 squared is 36. x squared squared is x to the fourth. And that same thing is happening in the very last box in each one of these. The very last box in each of these problems is also a perfect square. And it's actually just the second number from the parentheses squared, right? So seven squared is 49, two squared is four, six squared is 36, 10 squared is 100, and then y squared is y squared. So we are actually, we are squaring the first number and the last number. It's just, that's not the only thing that we're doing. I'd also like to point out that the last box in each of these problems is positive. Even if, right, in this problem, I had a negative six, when I square it, it changes to a positive six. Okay, so everyone ends with a positive number and starts with a positive number. The last pattern that I'd like to point out is that on our diagonal, our like terms are identical. Seven y and seven y. 6a and 6a, negative 6x and negative 6x, negative 60x squared y and negative 60x squared y. So on each of these problems on the diagonal, my like terms are always going to be exactly the same. So instead of adding them together, we could just double them. Okay, so if we look at our middle term, our middle term is just 7y times 2 because there were two of them. Over here, 12a, that's 6a times 2, because there was two of them. Now, your middle term is going to be negative if your middle sign was negative. So in this problem, my middle sign was positive, so my middle sign was positive. In this one, it was negative, so it was negative. 
And again, it's 6x times 2 is 12x. So these are the patterns that are going to happen anytime you have a parenthesis square. Let's go ahead and write out what the, that pattern is. So let's write it out in generic terms. This scenario with the parentheses squared is called a perfect square trinomial. It's called a perfect square trinomial because the parentheses is being squared. And my final answer is a trinomial with three terms. So that's one of the biggest mistakes I see on these problems is that we try to write the answer as a binomial, just a squared plus b squared. And you're missing that middle term that makes it a trinomial. So don't miss the middle term. Here's a sample uh, in generic writing of how to multiply out a perfect square trinomial without actually using the box. So you'll notice I have an a squared and a b squared. That's at the beginning and the end. And in the, in the middle, I have double, because remember we had those two on the diagonal that were the same, the a times the b. And then if I change the middle symbol to a minus sign, the only thing that changes in the answer is also that middle symbol will be a minus sign. The last symbol is always a plus sign. Just to confirm one more time, this is from the box. The first number is being squared. A times A is A squared. The last number is being squared. B times B is B squared. On the diagonal, I have multiplied my A times my B, and I have two of them. That's where this number two right here comes from. If you like uh, directions, steps that you're supposed to take, I'm going to write it out in sentences now. You're going to square the first number. You're going to multiply together the two numbers and double it. That's the diagonal. And you're going to square the second number. Three terms, it is a trinomial. So this is the pattern. And we're going to try to do the rest of our stuff today using the pattern and not using the box or foil or anything else. We're going to try to stare at it, write an answer. Here's my first example. I've color coordinated the numbers so that you can tell where everything is going. My hope is that when you see this, you're going to think in your head and then instantly write down an answer. So in my head, I am going to think I need to square the first number. So I'm going to do x squared. I need to multiply the two numbers together. That's the green x times 2. And I'm going to double it. That's that blue 2 that's in front. Okay. So I multiply my x and my 2 inside. And then the blue 2 in front, that's the doubling from the diagonal, right? And then the last thing I need to do is I need to square my last number, 2 squared. So that's what we're thinking in our head. And as we're thinking it, we can be writing down the answer. So we think, oh, okay, I need to do x squared. Well, that's just x squared. Okay, next I need to multiply my x times my 2. That's 2x. And then I need to double that. Well, that's going to be 4x. And then the last thing I think is I need to square my 2, and 2 squared is 4. So that first line, you can think it in your head, or if it helps you to write it out, especially since this is the first time that we're doing it, it's okay to write out that step also. So you can write out that step or you can think it in your head and then you're going to write down your answer. So we're trying to not use the box today. Let's do one more together. This one's a little bit trickier because there's a number in front of my Y. Okay, so in my head I'm thinking I need to do 2Y squared and we're going to have to square both of those. So 2 squared is 4 and Y squared is y squared. Notice that this was a minus sign in the middle and the next symbol I wrote was also a minus sign. All right, the next thing I'm thinking is, okay, I got to multiply 2 time, or 2y times 6. 2y times 6, that's 12y. And then I got to double that. That's going to be 24y. And then the last thing I need to think is 6 squared. If you want to make it a negative 6 squared, that's fine, but negative 6 squared and positive 6 squared, those both turn into a positive 36. So make sure that you always end with a plus sign. All right, and then that's the final answer, 4y squared minus 24y plus 36. Why don't you try some of these on your own before we're done for today? So here are four problems. 
go ahead and try them on your own. You can write out the middle step or you can just think it in your head and then write out the problem as you finish it. Pause and when you're done, we can check your answers. All right, hopefully that was enough time and you've already written down your answers. Here are the first two answers. So x squared and then 3x doubled is 6x and then 3 squared is 9. On the second one, I have a squared. 2a doubled is 4a, notice the minus sign, and 2 squared is 4. Number three was a little bit trickier. 2y squared turns into 4y squared because I'm squaring the 2 and the y. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 doubled is 20, so my middle term is a 20y, and then 5 squared is 25. For that last one, I have put a question on this video, so make sure to answer that question. And then um, there's more after the question, right? So you have to watch the video to the entire end. So answer the question, and then keep watching until the video says it's done. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you on tomorrow's video where we learn our second special case.